This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So within this video, we're going to go through there and just look at an additional complication that could be thrown into an exam question. And then we're going to go through there and look at the standard workings to try and make your life a little bit easier. So we've gone through and looked at your group retained earnings. So if we focus on the equity section, of the group accounts. Remember, we've got 100% of the parent share capital. We've got 100% of the parent share premium, if there is any share premium. Uh, the group retained earnings and the non-controlling interest, all of which relate to, to ownership, don't they? Uh, the parent owns its share capital, its share premium. Then the group retained earnings, it owns all of its retained earnings plus its share of S's post acquisition. And then the non-controlling interest own their share of the net assets or the fair value of the shares that they own plus whatever has happened post acquisition and their share of it. So it's all about ownership, isn't it? And all about equity. Now, there's another balance that could appear within equity and that other balance that you're potentially going to go through there and see would be a revaluation reserve. So there may be one in the parent, there may be one in the subsidiary. How do we go through and treat that revaluation reserve. It's within equity, so it's based upon exactly the same principles as where we see your group retained earnings. Okay, it's just an other reserve, isn't it? And our retained earnings for the group were 100% of the parent plus P share of S's post acquisition retained earnings, wasn't it? Well, here, uh, what you've got there is you take 100% of the parent. Again, the parent's revaluation reserve. And then you just add on P share of S's post acquisition revaluation reserve. Okay. So you would look at S's revaluation reserve at acquisition. You would look at it at the reporting date. Look at the movement and give the parent its share. Okay. Just be aware, you would then also, within the non-controlling interest, need to give the non-controlling interest their share as well. So remember, within the NCI, it's 100%, careful, within the NCI, it's the NCI acquisition, plus the NCI share of the post-acquisition retained earnings, plus the NCI share of the post-acquisition revaluation reserve. Okay, uh, you don't see that. A great deal, but if it does crop up, it could actually be some reasonably okay marks once you've settled yourself into the world of group accounts. So you're probably thinking this is all getting quite a lot, isn't it? So, so let's bring in some standardised workings. And these are going to be a lifesaver within the exam. Uh, so you've got five separate workings that we're going to look at. Uh, first one is there looking at the group structure. Uh, you don't have to draw it up as a group structure, but I really do think that it will help you understand what's happening at the start of a question. So you've got the parent, you've got the subsidiary. P owns greater than 50% of S, so therefore S is the subsidiary. And what I would be noting there is I would note the non-controlling interest percentage. Don't try and remember it. Uh, if you remember it, you'll either get it wrong. Uh, or you'll just forget it. So, so write it down somewhere on the page. And then what I would also note as well is the acquisition date. Uh, that's going to be important as we move along. Because at the moment, we've only seen the acquisition date it being the start of a calendar year uh, or at the end of the calendar year. Okay, And then the, the reporting date has been at the end of the calendar year, hasn't it? So we've either bought it on the very last day of the year or the very first day of the year, which works out quite well when we start to look at our retained earnings and the post-acquisition movement. In the exam, it might be a little bit challenging, so make sure that you note the acquisition date. Uh, working 2 is a really useful working. Uh, it looks at the net assets of the subsidiary. So like we've done previously, it focuses when we're looking at the net assets on the equity. Don't look at all the individual asset lines, all the individual liability lines and net them off. No. Focus on the equity section. 
Because within the equity section, you've got your equity share capital, share premium, retained earnings, and potentially a revaluation reserve as well. Okay, they all go in the net assets. We look at it at two points in time. So we look at it at the reporting dates. So that's great because that will just come from S's SFP that you have within the question. So you can copy the figures for share capital, share premium, retained earnings. You then look at it at the acquisition dates. So remember, there is no change in terms of the share capital, no change in, share, in terms of the share premium. What you need to look out for there is the retained earnings. That will be given to you within the question. And then all we go through and do there is we look at the movement. So from the reporting date, deduct what we had at acquisition and that will give you the post acquisition movement in net assets, which here is the same as the post acquisition movement in retained earnings because that's the only thing that is changing. Okay. You might have to do some funky calculations if the change in net assets isn't just due to movement in retained earnings, but also maybe the revaluation reserve. But hold that thought. We're just looking at the movement being at the moment due to retained earnings. Okay. So working one group structure, working two, the net assets. Uh, working three. Oh, that looks familiar, doesn't it? That's your goodwill calculation. Okay. Uh, so you've got your fair value of consideration. Just be aware, because we're looking at fair value of consideration, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to just be cash. Uh, you will see cash that's paid, maybe deferred to some point in the future, maybe contingent cash, maybe shares that are issued, so the parent issue shares in exchange for receipt of the subsidiary shares on acquisition. We'll see that later in this chapter. Uh, you've then got the NCI acquisition. So remember, that's going to be based upon your proportionate share or the fair value, isn't it? So you'll be guided in the question as to where that comes from. And then you've got the fair value of the net asset to acquisition. So the acquisition net assets in working two. This is where it all becomes magic. That figure there, the at acquisition net assets total goes to working three and goodwill. Okay, there we go. So that is the figure there that we will then go through and deduct. Okay, with it so far, brilliant. Uh, the next workings, working four, working five. Uh, working four is the non controlling interest. So we take the non-controlling interest at acquisition, which we have already just calculated. This figure here, the non-controlling interest at acquisition, goes to working number four. So make sure those numbers are the same. Again, that will have been done. Proportionate share method or the fair value method. Uh, you then go through and add in the non-controlling interest share of S's post-acquisition profits. Which you take from working two. Working two, how important is that? If we go back to working two, this post-acquisition figure here will go into working four. Whereby we will take the non-controlling interest share of it. Okay. Uh, working number five, the group retained earnings, 100% of the parent. So that should be quite easy to get within the exam. It just comes straight from the group statement of financial position of the parent. And then you see a familiar theme because we're looking at the post acquisition profits, the post acquisition retained earnings, hotel, motel, who cares? And what you need to do here is take that figure from working to so the same figure that you've taken to working four is the same figure that then appears within working five okay however in working five you take p share and in working four you take the nci share okay learn those workings commit them to memory it will make your life much 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 easier 
when it comes to answering any exam question, whether that's a multiple choice question or a longer question in section C.